What do we think is actually causing aging? You know, we've been debating what aging is um, uh, for the longest time. And, uh, you know, I think we would argue for two hours in some conference room somewhere in the world. And at the end of it, we would come up with the definition, shit happens and then you die. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really just, it's frustrating. I don't even want to talk about it now. And, you know, Vadim Gladyshev has, uh, has been on like a evangelical rant about how do we define aging? We don't know how to define it. He asks that question at every conference. And I, I think it's a fair question. Uh, and we all throw our hands up in the air. And so the idea was we have a lot of data now, a lot of human data. Um, and aging researchers are beginning to try to model that data. Uh, but they're not modelers. You know, I think most aging biologists, or at least myself, if I have a skill, it's intuition. It's not writing equations in code, you know. And But the physics people, the theoretical physicists as, as especially, they know how to model things. And they model things based on physical principles that yes. are that are proven, right? And so we, we've been trying to bring these groups together and, because I believe maybe the only answer to your question is that we have to write it in equations. And so uh, early days on that, but I'm excited about where that's going. And do you think that these will be explainable through equations or do you think that this exceeds our level of intelligence to understand and it's really going to be up to a black box that contains a neural network to understand this? And maybe we take a step back, actually. So for the listeners, they've heard us on this podcast talk about, quote unquote, hallmarks of aging. Mm -hmm. um, maybe explain to people what the hallmarks of aging are, which I, I don't mean like list them yeah. all, but yeah, the no, concept of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> I, won't, I wouldn't put you on the spot for that. Um, but the idea that has been proposed is that there are hallmarks of aging. And why is stating those not the same as answering the question that you, me, and everybody else is yeah. struggling with? Well, this is kind of an existential crisis with me because the hallmarks of aging came out in 2014 or 2013. And then I wrote another paper right after that called The Pillars of Aging, which is kind of the poor stepchild of the hallmarks of aging. <laughs> and that was um, because there was an NIH conference and there were seven topics discussed and they asked me to write a review on calling them the pillars of aging. So I did. But even in that review, I had the seven pillars of aging, but I connected them all with lines because I don't really think that these hallmarks and pillars, which are like the pathways in the cell that are thought to be driving the aging process, you know, inflammation, you know, epigenetic, epigenetic changes, aging, these kinds yeah. of things, uh, they're all interesting to aging and you can modify them or they get modified if you slow the aging process. But I, what strikes me is how entrained everything is. So if you take an intervention like rapamycin that slows aging, it can impact all of the hallmarks. Um, and so I don't really, I think those are like outputs or ways you can look at aging, but they're not, the, nobody is really just targeted. The idea that you can target each hallmark and then you'll live to live forever is, is not going to work because it's really the network that connects the hallmarks together. And to me, aging is a healthy aging is about maintaining homeostasis. It's about you know maintaining a responsive network in your body that sort of keeps you in equilibrium, responds to the events that are happening during aging, the stochastic events, the damage that's happening, and it keeps you functional. And, and that network is highly malleable. You can influence that network by drugs or behavior. Uh, and if you do, you get derived benefit from it and you can read it out as an improvement of all the hallmarks. It's not like one thing of exercise affects only this hallmark. Um, so I think it's... The hallmarks was good because it, it, it drove interest in the field. It's part of the reason that a lot of investment came uh, in the biotech sector. But uh, it also is misleading because I think the idea that aging is 12 different things and you just need to fix all 12 of them is, is completely wrong. It's really about maintain, your body knows how to function in a healthy way. It's about trying to maintain that and maybe improve upon it. So. Do you look at the hallmarks, which I believe have been modified since the original yeah. paper and a few others have been added, do you see an, an, a rank order or a seniority of them in terms of causality? So for example, one of the hallmarks is mitochondrial dysfunction. Yeah. Now one could say that mitochondrial dysfunction occurs independent of another hallmark of aging, which you've listed, epigenetic change. Alternatively, you could say actually it's the epigenetic change that occurs stochastically mm -hmm. 
and that that is driving mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh-huh. And if you reverse the epigenetic change to the previous epigenetic layout, you will correct the mitochondrial dysfunction. How do you, how do you think about the interconnectedness yeah. through the lens of causality? Yeah, I think the the primacy issue is a major one. I, I like the idea that mitochondrial might have been one of the primary drivers. Uh, also, you know, every time we do an experiment, we keep coming back to inflammation. All of the interventions that extend lifespan reduce chronic inflammation, or almost all of them. And then every time we create a new biologic aging clock, which we're doing a lot of now in my lab, you know, and we do principal components and figure out what the main driver is, it's always related to inflammation. Uh, and so I, I think there's something, it may not be, inflammation may be a response, but it's so central that uh, a lot of the interventions I think are working by dampening inflammation. But to your point, inflammation could easily be a readout state. Yeah, it, yeah. But it, it's certainly when you modify, I think when you modify it, you get an outcome, you know, so it's not just a, an endpoint that you look at. How are you measuring inflammation? I'm Peter Atia. This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights, You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future.